Now in this video we will be discussing on the EHRP metric process like we have discussed okay router router A let's say you got two possible routes to reach any specific destination and it's going to calculate the best route based on something called cost. Now we'll try to understand how this cost is actually calculated and what are the different values or different uh, different things involved in calculation process and what is the metric calculation in EHRP. So if you talk about RIP version 2, which we already familiar with that, RIP version 2 calculate the best route based on the hop cons. So if you have two routes, let's say this is my destination and via one route you have this route is having just one hop to reach that particular destination, nothing but one router and this route is having two hops, two routers, the best route will be calculated based on the least number of hop cons, which means the RIP will not see the bandwidth it will not see any other factors but when it comes to EHRP EHRP majorly it will see the bandwidth as the deciding factor in calculating the best route not only bandwidth it will also see something called delay load MTU and reliability so these are the five different values which EHRP will consider when it is calculating the best route so what's the difference so let's let's talk about bandwidth bandwidth is actually the speed of the link or we can say the width of the link and the default bandwidth on the serial links will be 1.5 Mbps which means we can say 1544 kbps of the bandwidth the default bandwidth on the serial links if you verify any fast ethernet interface what's the bandwidth 100 Mbps and if you if you just check any other uh, any other thing like say if you are using a gig ethernet interface the default bandwidth will be 1000 Mbps and if you're using 10 gig interface, the default bandwidth will be 10,000. So that is what 1,000 and 10,000, nothing but 10 gig, 10 gig speed. Okay. So the bandwidth is something, it's a fixed value and we can manually change the bandwidth by using a command called bandwidth in the, on the interface. So we can say bandwidth and we can define the bandwidth in terms of KPPS. The default bandwidth, these are the default bandwidth parameters, but we can actually manually change the bandwidth. Now, what's the reason when, when we need to change the bandwidth exactly? Let's take an example. I got a WAN connection from the service forwarder, which is my lease LAN connection. And I, I'm connecting the WAN connection between the two routers by using my serial interface. Now, what's the default bandwidth on the serial interface? If you want to verify, we can verify with a command. So I, I'll just start up my routers here. So the two routers, I got the console screen of that and how to verify so i can use a command show interface s1 by 0 right so if you use show interface s1 by 0 you can see all the five parameters which i'll be discussing bandwidth delay load empty reliability so as of now the default bandwidth is 1.1544 kbps so that is something default bandwidth it is going to use but sometimes so it's going to take assume the default bandwidth as 1544 kbps but when you're taking the WAN connection from the service portal, maybe you, you, your bandwidth, the speed of the link, the width, the bandwidth given by the service port is just 1000 kbps. So it's really because, you know, if even though your link is supporting 1000 mbps, but the default bandwidth on the interface is 1544 kbps. So when it is calculating the metric, it's going to consider as 1544 kbps only. So which means it's really important for you to change the bandwidth on the interface saying that the bandwidth it's going to be 1000 kbps so when ehrp is going to calculate the metric or the cost it has to consider the bandwidth as 1000 not 1544 kbps similar way if you are if you are taking any other wan connection by using fast ethernet interface maybe you are using some uh, metro ethernet lines any other wan connections over fast ethernet interface it's going to take as 100 Mbps, but maybe the service port is not actually giving you 100 Mbps because you're not paying for that. You need to change the bandwidth to 2 Mbps or 4 Mbps, whatever is given by the provider. So because based on that bandwidth only, we need to calculate the cost. We don't want the router to, to consider the actual, the default bandwidth on the interfaces. So it's always recommended. So to change the bandwidth, we just need to go to the interface let's say on the interface 
we need to say interface as one by zero i need to say bandwidth and the bandwidth has to be given in terms of kilobits per second which means if you want to give one mbps you have to give 1024 or around 1000 something like this so once you do this if i verify show interface s1 by zero once again you can see the interface bandwidth is changed here is 1000 kbps so once you change the bandwidth automatically the cost also will change okay so the bandwidth there's a first factor we need to check so what are the five factors it uses it's going to use bandwidth and the next factor it is going to use something called delay delays actually uh, can be defined as the amount of time or how much how long it is going to take to forward the traffic something like that so the default delay on the serial interface is going to be 20,000 microseconds and on ethernet links the default delay is somewhere around 200 microseconds let me check uh, fast ethernet i think so even you can verify this on s1 by 0 i'm giving a command called show interface s1 by 0 the default delay is 20,000 microseconds and let's verify show interface f0 by 0 fast ethernet interfaces the default delay is 100 microseconds which means so the default delay on ethernet the fast ethernet interface is 100 microseconds if you're using gig ethernet interface the delay will be around 10 microseconds so the more bandwidth you have uh, the more the less delay you will be having here but again don't think that when you change the bandwidth automatically it is going to change the delay it will not change unless and until you manually change it which means if i want to change the delay i can go to interface and i can give a command called delay and i can change it manually so these are the default delay parameters uh, not really required to change but it's if you want we can change which can impact the cost as well so let's say the delay on serial interface is 20000 microseconds the default i want to change the delay to somewhere around 1000 microseconds so if you want to change to 1000 microseconds we just need to say delay 100 so why i'm giving 100 because the delay will be calculated tens of microseconds which means if i want to give 1000 we need to define 100 so it will change to 1000 automatically so let's let's do that let's go to serial interface and before that i want to check what is the default delay on my serial interface it's 20000 microseconds I want to change the delay to somewhere around let's say one so you can see here whenever you will use question mark you will see tens of microseconds so i need to say let's say 100 so if i verify show interface interface s1 by zero i will be able to see delay as 1000 microseconds you can see automatically it is tens of microseconds this is how we can change the delay but generally most of the time we we really don't don't prefer to do that most of the time we'll be changing the bandwidth depending upon our WAN connections but these two are the fixed values and they can be changed manually by getting into the router interface apart from that there are three other factors which can also be used in in terms of metric in ehrp we call it we have something called mtu maximum transmission unit the default mtu size is always 1500 bytes and and there is something called reliability there is another factor which can be used and there is something called load now reliability is actually the reliability is the status of the link and it is calculated in between the values of 1 and 255 so when you have reliability one means it is less reliable now the reliability will be calculated based on the value and it ranges in between 1 to 255 and whenever you see 1 which is the default uh, sorry 255 is the default value which represents as more reliable and reliability is calculated mostly based on the status of the interface if the interface is up always all the time it means more reliable and if the interface is going down most of the time it is less reliable and again there is something called load load is again also will be calculated based on 1 1 to 55 you have tx transmitting load receiving load it depends on the amount of traffic flowing through the router router interface we can say 
So again, it is a little bit variable value. It keep on changing depending upon the amount of traffic. Reliability status also keep on changing. MTU is again fixed value. So technically, Cisco, uh, the EHRP calls these values as K values. So K values, where it is going to say uh, the bandwidth is referred as K1 and delay is referred as K3. And I think uh, reliability is K2. K4, K5, somewhere around these, these values, K1, K2, K3, K4, and K5. Technically, we call them as K values. And, and by default, even though uh, Cisco defined five factors can be used in the metric calculation, but by default, it uses only bandwidth and delay, which means K1 is one, K3 is one, whereas all the remaining values are zeros, which means they are not used in the metric calculation wherever where bandwidth and delay are used in the metric calculation now the reason behind that is actually these th these values reliability load actually these are these are like not uh, uh, fixed values they are like variable values and they they may change for every few seconds so every few seconds if they keep on change then uh, the router has to calculate the metric all the time. So which means it is going to add some extra overhead on the routing protocol. So there's something not really required for you to do. So that's the reason bandwidth and delay are the fixed values. Once you change on the interface, it will be fixed all the time and it is not variable. It will be fixed, but that is something can be done manually. So even though Cisco defined this as five values, bandwidth and delay, but five values as K values, but only K1 and K3 are used in the metric calculation. So to verify this, we can you always use a command called show IP protocols. When I give show IP protocols, if you are running EHRP, so I have running EHRP in my routers. If you remember in the basic EHRP process, I did that. You can see the metric weights is K1 is one, K2 is zero, K3, K4, K5. K3 is one and K4 and K5 are zeros. Uh, if you want to use these values, you can change, but I really don't suggest you to do this, but I'm going to just give you the command metric weights type of service is always zero. And here I can define the K value. K value is one by default. It's zero. I can define as one, but that is one which is used. If I want, I can give as one also. So which means when I give one, it's nothing, but I want to include the K2 value also in the metric. And again, I'm giving one. So don't do this. Uh, here I'm just doing it just for for you to show you. Okay, just to verify here, you can see all K values are ones now, which means I want everything. Uh, everyone should work. But again, if there is a mismatch of K values, the neighborship will go down automatically. That is one more thing you need to keep in mind. If you are changing on one router, you have to make sure that you change on each and every router. So don't do this. Not recommended. Again because we just need to go with the default metric values whatever used by uh, the EHRP so don't try this one but this command is just a reference for you in case if you want we can even change that now once I remove this you can see the neighborship comes up again between the two routers okay so this is what we discussed metric is actually bandwidth delay load empty reliability so based on this five values the metric is calculated now this is the actual formula used by ehrp uh, in calculating the metric or the cost so cost is going to generate some numbers so it's going to be 256 into k1 it's really not required for you to remember this because uh, most of the time we, we really don't do this calculation it is something done by the router and done by the routing protocol so we don't need to actually worry about this particular calculation, but this is the actual formula which is used by EHRP. So wherever there is K1, it's one. Wherever there is K2, it's zero is used. And then wherever there is K3, it's zero. Sorry, K3 is one. And then K5 is zero and K4 is zero. So after that, if I am using with the default K values, the, this formula will come something like this. K1 into bandwidth plus K2 into bandwidth uh, divided by 26 minus load plus k3 into delay and after that based on the bandwidth available it's going to generate one value something called cost it is going to generate one number called cost 
and whichever the route is having the least cost is the best so which means let's say the cost on the first route is 1000 and the cost on the second route is 2000 so automatically sort of this two it's going to consider this as a best route because that particular route is having the least cost when you compare with this and then the cost is uh, inversely proportional to bandwidth which means if you have more bandwidth automatically you will get the cost less okay so that's how this is the actual formula which it uses and if you want to verify the cost normally we can verify with a command called show ip route ehrp or show ip route simply you can see this number the number you'll see here this is actually the metric the cost so whenever i change the bandwidth or change the delay automatically it is going to change the cost let's let's try i'm going to change the bandwidth on on the serial interface as 64 just 64 which means 64 kbps so once i do that you can see the cost has to change it's too far i can see the cost has changed to 25 to some higher number because i reduced the bandwidth so even whenever you make any changes to delay also the cost will change so we don't need to really worry about this formula this is something uh, done by the routing protocol automatically but now the question is how how exactly it is going to see the bandwidth let's take an example now the bandwidth it is going to use 10 to the power of 7 divided by the least bandwidth in the path into multiplied by 256 let's take an example i got two routes from router a you have some one link and this is another link here a b c d one is that is the first route so now to find out the bandwidth in this formula it is going to use uh, the least bandwidth so the bandwidth here is 1.5 kbps well, sorry 1.5 mbps 1.5 mbps and this link is having 64 kbps of bandwidth so which means it is going to consider it will not take all the bandwidths instead it will see what is the least bandwidth on the path so these two are 1.5 mbps and this is 64 mbps which means it is going to use to find the overall bandwidth it is going to say 10 to the power of 7 divided by 64 uh, bandwidth in terms of kbps and then multiplied by 256 so and then it will generate one number this is the overall bandwidth it is going to use in the calculation process and similar way when it is going to calculate the delay it is going to use a formula called delay sum of all the delays multiplied by 256 so let's take an example in this route you have a delay of 2000 2000 and 2000 so which means what is the total delay overall delay is 6000 so it's going to take 6000 which means it's going to take 6000 divided by 10 multiplied by 256 and whatever the number it generates it's going to take as a delay value and then this delay value and the overall bandwidth it is going to include this in in the formula here here you can see so it's going to include the here the bandwidth overall bandwidth after the calculation and then overall delay it is going to add here and then it will generate the ehrp cost so this is how it is going to consider because many people have this confusion where let's say this link is having t1 line t1 line 64 so people think that it's going to add all this bandwidth no it's going to consider based on this formula so anyway this is something really required for you to uh, know especially if you're preparing for interviews this is something you need to know the default metric calculation in ehrp but most of the time uh, when you're when you're doing the things practically you don't really need to bother about this because this is something done by the router and the routing protocol automatically